China's Evergrande shares plummet by more than 80%. Here's a summary of the article. Chinese property giant Evergrande saw its shares spiral downward by more than 80% in Hong Kong on Monday morning after it resumed trading following a 17-month suspension. The debacle, which saw a stock once priced above Hong Kong $30 dip to 39 Hong Kong cents, reflects the troubles faced by China's real estate sector as the world's second-largest economy tries to recover from a post-pandemic slump. Trading in Evergrande shares resumed after the company said on Friday that it had met the necessary guidelines by publishing its financial results and fulfilling other listing rules. The Hong Kong Stock Exchange had suspended trading in the company's shares in March 2022 after it failed to publish its 2021 financial results. Evergrande finally published results for 2021 and 2022 last month. On Sunday, Evergrande reported losses for the first half of this year amounting to 33 billion yuan, up from the 66.4 billion yuan in losses in the same period last year. Under a proposal to be voted on by creditors on Monday, they will be offered the chance to swap their debt into new notes issued by the company and equities in two subsidiaries, Evergrande Property Services Group and Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group. This post received a score of 5,600, with an upvote ratio of 97%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. I feel like I've been reading this headline for two years straight. Is it ever going to collapse? And if so is there any hope it will drop house prices in Ireland lol? Your company can plummet by 80% indefinitely. At some point, though, it reaches the hard limit of a plank penny. Is that more or less than a plank cent? It's the same, we're trying to probe anything smaller using the SEC, Securities and Exchange Collider, will create a financial black hole. So in that case, it's a ruble. How is Evergrande still around? Intervention by the Chinese government to prop them up because they didn't want the public or investors to panic. 70% of the wealth among China's populace is tied to real estate. It's staggering. It's their version of the US stock market. Total U.S. stock market value is $46.2 trillion. Total U.S. household wealth is $149 trillion. So the stock market is about 31% of all wealth in the U.S. Every time I read about China's real estate market, I'm even more convinced that it is a government-sanctioned Ponzi scheme. Have to pay for an unbuilt house, have to pay monthly mortgage years before you get to live in your house. Assuming of course it ever gets built. Oh, and the value or sales of homes can never decline. Back in like 2015, I read the book Red Capitalism, the fragile financial foundation of China's extraordinary rise, and it showed how it's not just the real estate market that has ballooned. China's system has worked as long as the growth continued, but they haven't really been able to transition to a consumption based economy just yet, so things are more fragile than in most other economies. Real estate has been the main driver of GDP growth, making up 30% of China's GDP which is much higher than in most other countries, but eventually things can't just keep growing. My favorite part of the Chinese economy is the fact that every province self-reports their growth figures without any independent monitoring, and of course as central government demands plus 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 growth yearly, and the governors want to keep their jobs, freedom, they of course report 10% growth regardless of if it's true and then the next year report 10% growth on that. Imagine the cumulative effect of 11 years of overstated GDP growth. Let's say a province normally produces 1,000 tons of grain which is enough to feed the population. He says that they'll produce 1,500 tons, to which the central government goes, cool, send us 500 and you can keep the rest to feed the population. In reality they just produced 1,000 tons, so suddenly they're left with half of what they need to feed the people. But since the local officials can't lose face they just keep up the lie and let people starve. I really recommend the book Tombstone by Yang Jisheng to understand the great leap forward. It's an absolutely brutal deep dive into both what happened on the ground while also giving the political background needed to understand it. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.